That brings us now to Pluto. Now, Pluto was discovered in 1913 by the examination of photographic plates. Here we have two plates taken at different times, and we see here these four stars, and we see this star right here. And we look further at these stars, and the fourth star is missing. In fact, over here we see two bright stars, two small ones, and a single. And over here we see the two bright stars, two small ones, a single, and another one. The only way we get a moving object from one to the other is if it is in our solar system in orbit around the sun. Now, in 1978, Pluto was discovered to have a moon. We called it Charon. And Pluto and Charon are closer in size to each other than any other planet-moon pair. And so some people regard them as a double planet. Charon orbits Pluto every six hours, every six days and nine hours. The recent eclipses of Pluto with Charon have allowed the radii of both objects to be determined. Pluto is a fifth the diameter of Earth, and Charon is about half of Pluto's diameter. From the masses and diameters, Pluto's density is 2.1 grams per cu cubic centimeter, suggesting an object of water, ice, and rock. So if we were to make a guess, we would see that most of Pluto is water ice with a small rock and iron core. This is a Hubble Space Telescope picture of Pluto and Charon its moon. This is as good of an image as we can get. Now it's been speculated that Pluto and perhaps Charon as well were once moons of Neptune because Nep uh, Pluto crosses Neptune's orbit some of the time. Um, actually from 1979 through 1999 Pluto was inside the orbit of Neptune, which means it was actually closer to the Sun than Neptune was. Now, they are so far away that finding out even the basics as mass and size are getting are very difficult. Our best estimate to date of Pluto's mass is about 1 400th that of Earth. So, due to the small mass, there's been some discussion as whether it is a planet at all. As you know, it was recently removed from planet status turns out to be about the same size as our moon. Now due to its small mass and size, gravity on the surface is only 1% that of the Earth. So our 180 pound man that we've talked about would only weigh 1.8 pounds on the surface of Pluto. Pluto takes 248 Earth years to complete its trip around the Sun, and its path around the Sun is 30 degrees off the ecliptic. Some more pictures of Pluto and Charon. We can see how similar in size they are. This also gives you a size comparison of Pluto and Charon with respect to the Earth. And in particular, we see that Pluto is about the size as Western United States. Now in 2005, Pluto was discovered to have a third and fourth moon called Nix and Hydra. Two more were discovered in 2011 and 2012. Now, there was a 2013 poll that said that um, people would like one of those moons to be named Vulcan, and so we'll see what happens. Currently, their official names are P4 and P5 for the fourth and fifth moons. Pluto is not massive enough to retain much of an atmosphere. But in the 80s, infrared spectroscopy showed there was a methane atmosphere. Due to the orbit's high eccentricity, Pluto's atmosphere will freeze out for part of its year. The atmosphere is composed mostly of nitrogen gas, carbon monoxide, and some traces of methane. From the density of Pluto, again, we know it cannot be composed of solid rock. It must be made of frozen materials around a rocky core. The surface temperature of Pluto should be about 400 degrees below zero. The pluto charon system represents one of the wide-open frontiers in the solar system. No spacecraft has ever visited Pluto and Charon. And its angular diameter is only about a tenth of an arc second at best, which is just about at the resolving limit of the Hubble Space Telescope. Now We do have a mission to visit Pluto, and it was launched in 2006. It will actually arrive in 2015. It's called New Horizons. And after Pluto, Pluto it will travel through the Kuiper Belt. So what is the Kuiper Belt? Starting in 1992, astronomers became aware 
that there was a vast population of small bodies orbiting the Sun beyond Neptune. In the last decade, dozens more objects have been discovered with orbits beyond the orbit of Neptune in the range of 30 to 50 astronomical units. It's estimated that there may be more than 70,000 of these objects altogether. And observations show that these objects are mostly confined within a thick band around the ecliptic, leading to the realization that they occupy a ring or belt around the Sun. The ring is generally referred to as the Kuiper Belt. The objects are called Kuiper Belt Objects, or KBOs, and are important because they're probably similar to the primitive lumps of material which the planets formed out of billions of years ago. It's widely believed that the Kuiper Belt is the source of short-period comets. It acts as a reservoir of these bodies in the same way that the Oort cloud acts as a reservoir for long-period comets. Now, the way we find Kuiper Belt objects is through a blink sequence. It's essentially the same way we found Pluto. Astronomers will take a certain area of the sky and take a picture of it, and they'll take more pictures, and they'll survey the sky, and then they'll go back. And they'll line up digitally the same picture, and they'll look for any objects that move from time to time. Anything that moves with respect to the background stars over a short period of time has got to be in our solar system. And so we've found all these Kuiper Belt objects using these blink sequences. So there's all these maybe 70,000 more objects out there. How do we decide what's a planet and what's not? So the definition of planet was set in 2006 by the IAU, or the International Astronomical Union. And it states that a solar system, in our solar system, a planet is a celestial body that, one, is in orbit around the sun, two, has sufficient mass to assume hydrostatic equilibrium, means it's in a round ball shape, and three, has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. A non-satellite body fulfilling only the first two of these criteria is classified as a dwarf planet. So a dwarf planet is a celestial body that is orbit around the sun, has sufficient mass for self-gravity to overcome rigid forces so it, it comes to a round shape, and has not cleared the neighborhood around its orbit, or is not a satellite. All other objects except satellites orbiting the sun are referred to collectively as small solar system bodies. Because Pluto still has other objects that pass through its orbit and has been demoted to a dwarf planet. There's still debate about this. However, it's not alone. There are many dwarf planets. Triton could almost be considered a planet, except it's a moon. Of course, Pluto and Charon. But we see Eris is another object out in the Kuiper Belt. It's actually as big as Triton and bigger than Pluto and Charon. Or um, this one's called 2005 FY9. It was discovered in 2009. It hasn't been named yet because people are arguing who discovered it first. Orcus, Sedna. Uh, these are all objects that are um, quite large compared to other things in our solar system. But all of them cross paths with each other at some point in time. And so they haven't earned the status planet of cleaning out its orbit of all other objects. As time goes by, we've discovered more and more. 2003 EL61 is another object. It's hydrostatic. It isn't round, probably because it was spinning so much around this axis. You see, there's many more different dwarf planets with different sizes, and we've com compared these to the size of the Earth here. If we treat Pluto the same as anything else its size and in its condition, then either all of these would have to have been called planets or they're all dwarf planets, and the IAU decided it would be best to call them dwarf planets. This graphic shows you where a lot of these dwarf planets orbit. We have the Sun, Uranus, the blue orbit is Neptune, uh, this red orbit here is Pluto, but we see there's many other objects that are in different elliptical orbits. They all cr orbits cross each other, so none of them could be called a planet. Eventually, 
as they cross over a very long amount of time, there's some probability that they'll collide with each other and form a larger object. Eventually, when that larger object has collected all of these smaller dwarf planets, it will have cleared the neighborhood of all of its uh, competitors and will have a s new planet.